guys, my name is Nettie, and today I'll be talking to you guys about the Chinese government scholarship and how you can go study abroad in China for free. Let's get started. So what is the Chinese government scholarship? It just gives students a chance to go abroad to China for free and learn about Chinese culture, get them exposed to a new environment, and just ha get more influence and I guess getting more people to go, in a sense. So China created this scholarship long ago, and ever since then, people have been going. They don't advertise it that much, and not much is said on their website about it. So I'll be going on about mainly about the application process, um, what's required, deadlines, and any other questions you guys have. Just let me know in the description. So let's get started with it. But before then, I'm going to give you guys some background story. So back from 2015-2016, I actually did the scholarship, but I went to um, Fudan University in Shanghai, um, and I did the Chinese language program. And I did that for a year, and I was sponsored by the Chinese government. And with that, I was given a chance to learn Chinese. I was surrounded by students from all over the world. My classroom, um, I'm the only American, but my classroom was filled with people from Switzerland, um, Canada, uh, Thailand, Spain, even there was a guy from North Korea, like isn't that crazy? But yeah, I loved it so much. I'm actually reapplying and I'm also creating this video because I feel like I've been asked a lot about how I got to go for a year. And I want to share this information with you guys because, like, honestly, like, this, you can't beat this any better. Like, and it's not tied to any, like, university, so you don't have to be going to school to apply to this. You can be five, ten years out of school and you can apply if you're much older. You could be straight out of high school and apply. So, actually, let's start with the requirements then. So requirements to apply, you need to have at least a high school diploma to apply. So if you are a senior and you're graduating from high school and you want to apply for this program, guess what? You can. But the thing is, you need to get verification from your school saying that you are graduating on this day. So if you get that from your school, like school official and like with an official like um, school sale and a header and all that. You should be good to go. Um, and then also you have to be at least 18. If you're not up to 18, you need a guardian that's going to help sponsor you. Not necessarily sponsor you, but be your guardian in China. So you need verification of that. And then there's different programs, but I'll be mostly talking about applying if you're going just to study Chinese. If you are going for undergrad, graduate, PhD, or research, um, there's slightly different requirements, but most of this stuff will still pertain, if not all of it will still pertain to you. So definitely listen to the end of this video. So if you are applying for those programs, you need to be at least 25 to apply for the undergrad, uh, 35 for the graduate, uh, I think 40, I believe for postgrad, I mean not postgrad, PhD. And then if you want to apply just for the language program, you could be up to the age 45. So if you think you're too old, no one's ever too old. So the deadlines vary from country to country. So I forgot to mention, I'm from the US. Um, I'm from regionally Washington, DC, but I'm in PA right now for school. And it varies from country to country. I know for the US this year, our deadline is March 25th. I got an email from the embassy. Every all the materials and application stuff has to be sent, and it ha well, not even sent. It has to be there at the embassy on the twenty fifth. So, make sure if you are getting particular documents that you know that'll take longer, um, definitely um, plan ahead. And if you are planning on applying, definitely get started now because you, as much as you think you have enough time, you know. That time we're gonna catch up on ya. Okay, so for the actual application process, um, there's a few things that are required. So the first thing is the online Chinese government scholarship application form. Um, there's a website you go to fill that out, and I'm actually gonna show you 
how to do all of that right here. Hey you guys, let's get started. So we're going to visit the Chinese government scholarship website. We want to go to this website, www.csc.edu slash cn slash study in China. Um, and yeah, type the other stuff in next. So let's go there. And this is the main homepage of the Study in China website. Um, here you will have the, the list of scholarships. You'll mainly want to go here for the main government scholarships. But I'm not going to go there. We're going to be going to the application online for international students. This is where you'll be applying to um, the scholarship program. So let's go ahead and click here. And then when you get here, you'll have some information about the program category type. Make sure you read this. Um, it's very important because you need it to apply for the program you're going for. Most people will probably be applying through the Chinese Embassy. So category A will be your, um, will be your way to go about it. So let's go ahead, scroll down, and click Next. Um, and then you'll have to sign in. Um, it'll be in Chinese. Mine automatically switch to English, but if yours doesn't do that, just make sure you click English here and go ahead and create an account. Um, I would avoid using Gmail because um, Google is blocked in China. And it didn't work for me the last time I tried using it. And I think instead I use Hotmail. And then if that doesn't work for you, create a QQ account. I'm going to put a link down below of how to do that and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in, um, but we're just going to skip that part because I don't want you to see my um, email. Okay, and once you sign in, you'll see a very similar page you saw when I first clicked on the application online link. Um, it pretty much says the same thing, so if you haven't read it, it's here for your use. Um, so go ahead. On the top, you'll see four buttons. You want to click Application Online. And here, it shows the entire application to its entirety. Um, this red up here, it shows that you didn't submit the application yet. So we'll get more into that. Um, but to start off, we have the program application type. So those types I was telling you about will um, be important for where you're applying to. In this case, I'm from the U.S., so I'm applying to a Chinese embassy in the U.S., so our code is 8401. If you don't know your code, I actually will put a link in the description box of all the codes for all the embassies and even universities if you're applying to a particular university, so that will be helpful for that. And make sure when you type in this information, you need to hit save, and this will come up. Then the next section is your personal information. Here you'll type in, of course, your basic info like name, date of birth, and whatnot. Um, for your given name and surname, for every reason you cannot type it in um, lowercase. It has to be in all caps. Try it. it. I tried it and it didn't work for me. So just make sure it's all caps. For your Chinese name, you don't you don't need to have one, but if you have one like myself, go ahead and add it there because why not? If you don't have one, don't stress about it. They'll give you one when you start um, attending the school. Another thing to note when you're applying for this uh, scholarship, uh, you need to have a passport. So if you don't have a passport, please be on that and get it down because you need to enter this information here. Uh -huh. So very important. And then, of course, your address. Make sure you put your at your per permanent address here. Make sure it's, um, it's accurate because they will be mailing you documents if you do you get accepted and they follow what's here. So make sure you um, keep that there. Make sure you also save when you're done. The next thing is employment and education history. Um, I, am, I am in college right now, so I have my stuff here, but I also have my high school education. And I have that listed here. And then I also listed even my um, time at Fudan. So I listed that there as well. And then I have my most recent employment um, history here. And then following that is the language proficiency. Like I said, you don't need to know Chinese to apply through the scholarship. Um, 
So I put down fair for me because I feel like it's not good, but it's not terrible. So if you don't have any, just put none. It's not a big deal. Um, and other things to note, if you're taking HSK, make sure you make that noted here. Um, if you're not from a English speaking country, make sure you put that here as well. If you've taken the, um, the, what's it, the TOEFL? I don't, <laughs> TOEFL? No, that's not, that's not the test I'm thinking about, but you know, you guys know the test. Um, and from there, another thing you want to add, so if you are an, uh, applying for the Chinese language program, you need to put general scholar. Um, there's other uh, scholars if you're applying. I think seniors for like um, research. So just go on the website I link below and see what applies to you. And then if you're applying for the Chinese language, you want to choose literature as your discipline and then Chinese language. And then for your universities, make sure you do some research before you apply. Also think about location. If you want to be in a city or if you want to be a rural area, also note um, weather, if that's a big deal to you, pollution, or like even smaller things like the the best of the best or like some school that specializes in what you're going for. If you're just doing Chinese language, I mean, you can go pretty much anywhere for that. Majority of the schools have it. Um, I went to Fudan, so I put Fudan as my first again, but I might. Um, I really like Chengdu. And one of my close friends went to this university, and I, I wouldn't mind living there, so I might actually switch it. So we'll see. And then if you ever worked or study in China under Chinese government scholarship, make that note below as well. Um, following here is uh, contacts. So you could put your contacts in China, I guess, for people um, who have, I guess, connections in China that you wouldn't mind adding on your application. I don't have that, so leave that blank. And then I put my parents' um, name and information below us here as well. And then the most important part is the supporting documents. So um, this year, they're really, so you not only do you need to mail the documents, you also need to um, upload them online. I would recommend that um, try to get this done um, especially here, it says what you need to add. Um, of course, you, these are the main things you need to add. And then you, people who are applying for more than six months need to add the physical exam. So if you are applying for just a semester, don't worry about this section. But yeah, make sure you add these. I've, as you can see, I've already added pretty much everything but my physical exam, which I'm getting done this week. So. I should be able to um, submit my stuff soon. Also, like if you don't have a scanner um, that you live, like if you don't have access to a scanner, I would recommend that you can possibly even download this app called Cam Scanner. Um, I use it on my phone. It is absolutely amazing. Um, it looks like you scanned a photo of your um, documents, I mean, right from the scanner, but on your smartphone. So honestly, saves lives. And it's both for Android and Apple. So yeah, go ahead and do that if you don't have a scanner. And then once you finish doing, um, filling out all the requirements, you want to click Submit. And then when you scroll back to the top, um, this one, I think this will turn green. I'm not sure because the application looked nothing like this the last time I applied. And you'll have to print out the application. And then once you print that out, you have to mail it to your embassy. So definitely, like I said, check your, check your country. See if you have a Chinese embassy and see where you have to mail it. Because you can't just mail it to the main address. A lot of times you're mailing it to a specific um, person at the office there. So de de definitely double check before you, um, you do that. So after you do the application form online, um, you want to get the highest degree you have notarized. So what is notarization? So getting a document notarized, meaning you take it to a shop that um, certifies that the what you're sending in is a legit document. So I guess China does this to avoid people 
um, like faking that they graduated from a school and like I said the least minimum you need is a high school diploma so say if you're in college like myself I'm graduating this semester but university has really strict rules on um, degrees and they can't physically give it to me till I actually finish the degree so I'm turning in my high school diploma and that is totally fine so if you are do in that predicament like myself just turning a high school diploma and that's the same goes for transcripts so you also need your transcript notarized um, it doesn't say it on the website but um, and every embassy is different so I would say double check um, call your local Chinese embassy and ask them just to make sure before you go about your application process Notarization is really, um, it varies from country to country. I hear it's pretty expensive in a lot of other countries, but in U.S. it's re relatively cheap, and particularly in Pennsylvania. The last time I applied, I think I paid, like, not even, like, $5 to get it notarized. And they literally just, you need to bring in the official, like, form of it, and then they, like, inspect it and make sure it's legit. They type up a letter in their letterhead and then send it off. And you can get documents notarized generally at a bank, but double check and call because some certain banks don't do that kind of stuff. And then if a, your bank can't do it, you can also um, call, you can also like Google a notarization office. And normally you can go through there with that. And then another thing to know about your application in general, if you, especially if you're turning in, um, a high school I mean not high school diploma but a diploma and a transcripts if they are in languages that are not English or Chinese you do need to get it translated first and then get it notarized um, it's just a requirement and I hear translation um, translating forms like formally you have to go to an office like you said like I said when you do notarization you gotta do the same for translation to get it translated that costs, I hear, quite a bit too in certain countries. I have some friends that I met when I studied abroad in China. They pay like over $100 um, plus just to do that process alone. So definitely like um, inquire ahead and see even if like you're going to school now. See if your school could do it for free possibly. Definitely look into those options. And I know for notarization too, if you go through your bank, a lot of banks do it for free if you're a customer with them. So yeah check that out um, another thing that you have to do is write a study plan um, the study plan varies um, for what you're applying for if you're applying for the language program like I am a general scholar they say on their application or a non-degree program um, the word limit is 500 words just talk about why you want to go to China if you have um, past interest in studying Chinese if you have any like just talk about yourself you know you don't have to talk a lot about China just don't think too much just go with it and it can be in either English or if you know Chinese you can write in Chinese as well so do kui oh that didn't come out right <laughs> one thing to note if you are um, if you are applying for the undergrad um, the word limit is not uh, 250 words or is it 200 uh, I'm gonna put it here <laughs> and if you are applying to do postgrad or research um, you I think the word limit is 800 I'm pretty sure 800 words so yeah don't think too much about it just do it you know the next thing you need um, most people probably won't need this, but like I said earlier, if you are under the age of 18, you do need to show valid proof that you are, um, you have a, what's it called? Oh, it's not coming to me. Um, that you have a, a guardian in China. Um, I'm not sure what, how you would go about doing that. So I highly recommend, having you have any questions, call the embassy. I'm going to put the links and of embassy um, website below and I'm also gonna put phone numbers to call for the embassy so yeah the biggest thing you'll definitely need especially if you are planning to study for more than six months is the foreigner physical exam um, there's a form you download and you need to go to your doctor essentially 
and let them know that um, you need to get some tests done, show proof that you are healthy, and turn it in. So how you go about it is pretty much, like I said, print out this form. I'm going to show you here. And once you do that, um, get a passport photo taken. It doesn't have to look the best. It doesn't have to be professional. You just need a photo there that is passport looking like. And it doesn't have to fit the box. Um, and then go to your doctor, your family doctor, set up an appointment, or however you have, you do it in your own home country. And pretty much just go down that form, do all the tests it's asking you, especially the ones on the back. And then one thing you need to know, you need to make sure um, when they put the sales, like the doctor sales, the stamps on the form, one needs to go at the bottom on the second page where it says stamp. And then another one needs to go on the photo half half on, half off. That way so it doesn't look like it looks fake, um, that you forged it. Uh, two other things you can attach your application but it's not absolutely necessary is one, pre-admission letter. So if you are particularly, this is more for undergrads, um, people applying for undergrad, graduate, um, research, whatever you would call it. Um, if you really want to go to a specific school because they, um, they're, I guess, specialized in something you really want to do, um, it's best you, when you choose your three schools on the, um, on the website that you contact them personally and ask for a pre-admission letter. That guarantees that it's a higher chance you'll get that school to go there for that degree. And once you, once it, what it's like certifying that more than likely you will go to that school. So it's no guarantee, and you don't need to get pre mission letters for all schools. So I would say definitely inquire um, before you apply. Um, the best way to go about it is calling. I'm trying to think. Um, the easiest way to do it is to um, contact the school's admission um, like people and normally you can go on like their international webpage on their website and then find it there or you can contact the international um, sector like the international office and contact them there but um, it's more sen it makes more sense to contact the admissions office and inquire about it find their email and contact them so like I said you don't really need that um, especially for language Program students, um, if you put your first choice, uh, I don't, I don't know what other chances you'll get it, but I put food my first on my application, and I'm pretty sure I only put food on on my application. I got food on, so um, definitely, I you, I wouldn't be worried for you guys, but more so for people who are applying for the degree program. So keep that in mind. And another thing to keep in mind is that if you are applying for a Chinese um, top program particularly once again for degree programs that if you already have Chinese under your belt um, you can attach your HSK level um, certif certification like if you took HSK um, test you can test out and just immediately start in the degree so you don't have to know Chinese to be to go into the degree programs they do a rudimentary up to two years where you can just study Chinese and then once you do that you'll have to take HSK and then once you pass HSK then you can start doing your actual degree program but if you know Chinese and you have HSK and you just want to go right into the degree program attach your HSK certificate that's very important um, I'm not sure of the how much how many years it's valid before um, you can not use it anymore if you've taken it in the past but keep that in mind but if you haven't taken it it's not necessary but it's nice to know for them so keep that in mind um, another thing to know if you are applying for the graduate or research programs you do need letters of recommendation people applying for undergrad and the Chinese language program you do not need recommendation to apply once again you do not need it even the website says it. I'm going to link, put all the links to the website of the information below just so you can see and I can show you that this, you don't need it. Like, you don't. Uh, to go over again what you need, 
um, you need a copy of your Chinese government scholarship application printed from the website. You also need um, a copy of your highest degree notarized. Also a copy of your transcript notarized. Um, you need uh, your study plan whether you're, it's 500 words, 200, 250, or 200 is it, and, or 800. And, and then if you're not up to age 18, you need verification that you have an adult while you're in China. And then two other things that you don't necessarily need to add, but if you have them, it's nice. Uh, Pre-admission letters from the three schools, um, or one or two or whatever. Or, and then also if you take in the HSK test. Um, you can attach that as well. It needs to be in this order. Um, it has to be in this order. And on top of that, you need two of everything. But apparently this year, in, and I'm talking about the U.S. embassies, you only need to send one. One of everything. But that's for the D.C. embassy. I'm not sure about the New York embassy um, of China. So I would say definitely inquire about that before you start preparing applications and not just for people in the US people all around the world because every app, app every embassy does something slightly different so keep that in mind and yeah also recommend um, once you send in your application I'll put in the address below of where you send it to for both the DC and um, New York embassy below um, but when you send your application, give it like a week and then call the embassy and make sure they received it. Otherwise, you'll never know. And then call them again um, around April. Not April. Call them around July to see if you, um, if they heard back from Beijing on whether you got the scholarship. That helps too. I did the same thing when I applied my first time. And I got, I was relatively successful. So, yeah. I hope this helps. Um, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. If you have any questions or want to, want me to make another video about my time in China. Um, the, the beginning days of while I was there. My time at Fudan. Um, just let me know. I can make another video. I'm very open to that. And in general, if you just have any questions about the application process or about um, anything else about the application process like just let me know I'm here to help so yeah